Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the timeline of the incident, then move to my analysis. On March 23, 2024, a container ship called Dally arrived at the Port of Baltimore, located in Baltimore, Maryland. The vessel was operated by a company in Singapore called the Synergy Marine Group. 22 crew members were on board. All of them were from India. On March 26, 2024, sometime not long after 1 a.m., Dali departed from the Seagirt Marine Terminal with the destination of Sri Lanka. Two pilots were on board the vessel, bringing the total number of people on the ship to 24. A ship pilot is a state-regulated professional who has the responsibility of navigating vessels safely through the port. Part of the ship's journey through the harbor included traveling under the Francis Scott Key Bridge. This 1.6-mile continuous truss bridge spanned the Patapsco River and the outer Baltimore Harbor. It is part of Interstate 695. As Daly was headed toward the bridge at 8 knots, the crew contacted the Maryland Department of Transportation and declared an emergency. They indicated that they had lost power and propulsion. There were concerns that a collision with the Francis Scott Key Bridge was possible. This prompted the authorities to halt all vehicle traffic on the bridge. At 1.24 a.m., the lights of the vessel started flickering. At 1.26 a.m., the ship diverted from its course. Smoke could be seen billowing from the vessel, and the lights continued to flicker. At 1.27 a.m., Daly struck one of the support columns for the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The collision caused the main span of the bridge to collapse into the water. Part of the bridge landed on the bow of Daly. No one on board the vessel was injured. There were at least 20 workers on the bridge when it collapsed. They had been filling potholes when they were plunged into the harbor. The water around the scene of the disaster was 50 feet deep, and the temperature was 47 degrees Fahrenheit. A massive search and rescue effort was initiated. At the time of making this video, two people had been rescued from the river. One was not injured, and the other was treated at a hospital and released. One body has been recovered as rescuers continue to look for missing workers. There will certainly be many more updates on this case as the investigation continues. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Construction was initiated on the Francis Scott Key Bridge in 1972, and it opened on March 23, 1977. It was named after the man who wrote the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner. Francis Scott Key witnessed the Battle of Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. This inspired him to write a poem that later became the national anthem. The bridge cost about $110 million to build and carried about 12 million vehicles each year. The main span of the bridge was 1,201 feet long, which made it the third longest span of any continuous truss bridge in the world. The Baltimore Harbor Tunnel, which opened in 1957, and the Fort McHenry Tunnel, which opened in 1985, do not allow hazardous materials. So the Francis Scott Key Bridge maintained particular significance for that purpose. Now vehicles carrying hazardous materials must take Interstate 695 to the west of Baltimore, which is a much farther route. Item number two, the ship involved in the collision, Dali, was built in 2015 in South Korea. It is 984 feet long. The beam of the ship is 157 feet. The beam is the widest point of the ship. Dali has a gross tonnage of 95,000, meaning it is an average size container ship. The name Dali came from the Spanish artist Salvador Dali. The vessel passed through the Panama Canal on March 13, 2024. It stopped at Newark, New Jersey and Norfolk, Virginia before reaching Baltimore, Maryland on March 23. It had been scheduled to arrive at its next destination in Sri Lanka sometime around April 22, but of course the ship never made it out of Baltimore Harbor. 
Dali had 27 inspections since 2015. Two deficiencies were found. One deficiency in 2023 was related to propulsion and auxiliary machinery. An incident at the port of Antwerp in 2016 impaired the seaworthiness of the vessel, but it was repaired. The vessel was last inspected in September of 2023. No deficiencies were found. There is no specific or credible information to suggest that the collision had any connection to terrorism. This, of course, has not stopped conspiracy theorists from generating nonsensical explanations for what happened. Item number three, this disaster has caused a lot of different reactions. Many people are understandably upset about what happened to the workers who were on the bridge. There are concerns about the economic impact, and people are stunned by how a Baltimore landmark was destroyed quickly and unexpectedly. In addition to all these reactions, some people are experiencing a heightened fear of bridges. For instance, if they had any fear of bridges prior to the collision, this tragedy has amplified those fears. This fear is called jephyrophobia, and it's not uncommon. The fear typically involves symptoms like anxiety, panic, avoidance, and intrusive thoughts related to crossing a bridge. One challenging component related to a fear of bridges is how the structure and function of a bridge can activate other common phobias. So the fear may not be specific to the bridge, rather it may be related to one or more phobias connected to the bridge. For example, many bridges, including the Francis Scott Key Bridge, were designed to allow travel over water, like a river. Many people are afraid of water. Using a motor vehicle is a common way to cross a bridge. Some people are afraid to drive. Some bridges have substantial height, so ships can sail under them. This would activate a fear of heights. Due to the height, some bridges are subjected to high winds, sometimes strong enough to generate substantial force, enough to require a driver to compensate to stay in their lane as they cross the bridge. When someone starts driving on a bridge, they are usually obligated to completely cross it. Stopping or backing up are usually frowned upon as those behaviors could lead to motor vehicle collisions and fatalities. This obligation to cross the bridge creates a pressure to perform, which some people are afraid of. Finally, there's a fear of being trapped on the bridge. If there is some type of collision or road construction that causes traffic to stop, the person crossing the bridge will be stuck. In most situations, they cannot exit their vehicle and start walking down the bridge. Even if they could, this would lead to additional fears. When looking at all this together, we see that bridges weave a tapestry of dread encompassing five different phobias. Fear of water, fear of driving, fear of heights, fear of performance, and fear of being trapped. If bridges also contained spiders, germs, and public speaking demands, they would represent the ultimate source of terror for just about everybody suffering from phobias. Item number four, one of the most interesting elements about how a fear of bridges connects to mental health counseling is the nature of the training materials used for treatment. When dealing with almost any phobia, one way to help a client to overcome it is to examine the irrational nature of the phobia. With some phobias, exposing the irrational component is quite easy. For instance, if a client is afraid of ghosts, demons, or honest politicians, the counselor can always point out how none of those entities exist. With other phobias, however, the source of the fear does contain a certain level of danger. For example, when talking about a fear of snakes or a fear of flying, there have been instances where people have been bitten by snakes or have died in plane crashes. Here, the counselor would emphasize how there is a low probability of an incident while recognizing that the danger is real. One of the techniques used to help clients overcome a fear of bridges is to emphasize how a bridge would never collapse suddenly without warning. The idea that a ship could rapidly destroy a bridge was unheard of, at least until the Francis Scott Key Bridge disaster. I think the lesson learned here, as far as the mental health counseling perspective, is how psychotherapy used to treat phobias should center on the low probability of the feared outcome, as opposed to the idea that the worst outcome is impossible. Now moving to my final thoughts. I have lived on the East Coast for most of my life, and I've traveled through Maryland thousands of times over the years. I've probably crossed the Key Bridge somewhere around a hundred times. 
The last time I was on the bridge was probably at least 10 years ago. I usually take the Fort McHenry Tunnel when traveling through Maryland because it's faster when you're just passing through. It's so strange to see the Key Bridge destroyed because no one would ever imagine that a bridge like that would be destroyed in a matter of seconds. It would be different if it was a planned demolition, but to be wiped out by a cargo ship? It truly is an unthinkable tragedy. The bridge didn't stand a chance against the momentum of that ship. It was almost like the bridge was made of popsicle sticks. This terrible incident serves as a reminder that there is always the possibility of disaster. As with many disasters, this one probably occurred because of a sequence of unexpected and unlikely failures, each one so insidious that no one was able to predict the final outcome. Those are my thoughts on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.